everyone and welcome to the Formula E Pit Lane Preview Show. My name is Erin Adetosie and alongside me is Saunda CB and we are buzzing to be here in Jakarta where we're going to be racing for the very first time in Formula E history. It's so exciting to be here. Let's just get one thing out of the way though. It's warm, it's humid, it's a little bit gloomy, very exciting ahead of race day. The weather changes a lot here on the coast but it's super cool to be here. Oh yeah. Factoid for you, you ready for it? Go on, drop it in early. Early doors, factoid, here we go. This is Formula E's 17th time wow. racing in Asia, but crucially, yeah. as you mentioned, number one here in Indonesia. Very exciting times indeed. Well, there's a lot to talk about about Saturday, but before we do, we are going to hear from Sergio Sete Camera, where we put your fan questions towards him. We're also going to be talking with Eduardo Mortara and Jake Dennis, two, let's say, specialists at first time races like here in Jakarta. And we are going to be hearing from none other than Saunders with everything you need to know about this weekend and also who to look out for. Roll the meeting. <laughs> For the first time this season, we're racing in a new destination previously uncharted by Formula E and electric street racing. This brand new Jakarta circuit brings a lot of new challenges to the championship and our teams and drivers. And based on how this season has been unfolding so far, those unknowns create a lot of reasons to be excited about this weekend's action. So what do we need to know? As it stands, Mercedes EQ driver Stoffel van Dorn leads the championship, the back-to-back -back podiums in Berlin helping to maintain that top spot. But the gap behind has been narrowed, with only 16 points separating the top three of van Dorn, Mortara and Verne. So close enough for a shake-up of the leaderboard after this Saturday's race. If you were looking at favourites, Van Dorn is the man to beat. He's had six top five finishes in eight races, two wins and four podiums. Consistency is key in this championship, and it doesn't get much more consistent than that at the midway point. But can a new circuit with more unknowns break that momentum and make way for a new race winner? To answer that question, it's probably a good exercise to look at who has performed well on new circuits in the past. Jean-Éric Verne, for one, continued his run of being the only driver to score points in every race in Berlin, still on the hunt for that first win of the season, but Jev is a very experienced driver, and when it comes to hitting the ground running at new circuits, he often does pretty well. Experience, or lack of, is a huge differential on new circuits in Formula E. There's no past race data to build into strategies or sim preparation, no ability to simulate the temperature and humidity challenge of a circuit like this, and only a few days of sim time to prepare for a new track layout. So nailing the basics of being a Formula E driver, energy management, racecraft, car control, tyre management, efficiency, gives those drivers and teams with more seasons under their belts an advantage. Meaning there's a few veterans on the grid that have a good chance of performing well here in Jakarta, especially with this season season's head-to-head duels -head qualifying format in mind. But there's always an exception, or two, that break the rule, and in past seasons, they've been called Jake Dennis and Nick DeVries. Both drivers have put in great rookie performances on circuits new to the championship over the past few seasons. And with DeVries, a reigning champion, and Dennis, a title contender last season and keen to get his season back on track, could we see that ability to master new tracks quicker than others come to fruition again? A strong performance and points haul for De Vries would be very welcome for the Dutchman. Coming off the back of his second win of the season in Berlin, after a bit of a dry spell, there's a decent gap to make up on his teammate at the top of the standings, and for any hope of retaining his title. Now we've reached the midpoint of the season, things need to go well for De Vries to properly get back into the fight. Jakarta is a hot city with a tropical climate, and being on the coast means the weather can change quickly. Hot climates and high temperatures have a profound effect on battery and efficiency. Percentages will drop much more quickly in conditions like this, so the drivers will need to manage their battery temperatures throughout the race to maintain optimum efficiency and race pace. A higher track temperature will cause more wear on the tyres as well, so that too will need consideration whilst battling around a new circuit, nose to tail with 21 other drivers trying to win the race. Easy. And if that wasn't enough to contend with, some forecasts are predicting rain on race day. And anyone that's experienced a rainstorm in Asia will know how much that could shake things up. There's drama coming from every angle this weekend, and we love it. 
So let's talk a little bit about the circuit hosting this Saturday's action. A purpose-built racetrack designed to bring all of the best bits of street racing to Angkor Beach and the coast of the Indonesian capital. There's a point to be made that this circuit's configuration shares similarities to Diria and therefore may suit the Mercedes package of the manufacturer team and customer team Rocket Venturi. But the added efficiency and battery challenges that come with the weather conditions could change things and perhaps favour other teams that have showed heightened efficiency so far this season, like Jaguar TCS Racing. Or could any setup advantages make way for drivers who can just get up to speed on this new circuit more quickly, or deal with whatever the weather throws at them? These are just some of the unknowns that make this race so interesting and exciting. So there's a few thoughts to whet your appetite. Make sure you head over to fiaformulae.com forward slash watch to find out where you can watch the race and find out all the session timings. And let us know your predictions below. Wow, that's got me really excited for this Saturday. For sure, there's a lot of interesting factors that are building this to be a very interesting and exciting race. And I think two drivers who are going to be very confident looking into this weekend is Jake Dennis and Edo Mortara. Yeah, both of them have won races in new locations before, uh, even last season, as early as that. Eduardo Mortara in Puebla, Mexico, and Jake Dennis won first time racing in Valencia and London. Exciting times indeed. Well, we caught up with both drivers in the pit lane. So who's starting? Me or you? You're the one, uh, actually, you're the expert of, uh, of this piece. No, no. <laughs> I've seen like, a couple of like, stories, like, you're good at that. <laughs> so Edo, obviously uh, last time we both went to a new circuit, we had the luxury of winning. Uh, mine was in London and yours was obviously in Puebla. Yeah, what, what do you think is the, um, the edge what we had going to a new circuit? Because normally, Formula E, we generally go to some of the same locations, you know, but obviously Puebla and London was new for us last year. What do you think you did well in Puebla? Yeah, firstly, it would be cool to repeat actually the, the victories that we had, uh, you in, uh, in, in London and me in, in Puebla. What is important? It's a good question. Um, I, think, I think like every, um, every family race weekend, I think it's quite important to prepare them well. Yeah. So pretty sure that you with, with Avalanche, you, you, you do quite a lot of like simulator yeah. like us. And uh, I think it starts from there and then, uh, then obviously you need to kind of, I guess, like predict a little bit the problems that you're going to get here. And, uh, and try to already think about solutions maybe that, that, that you could get. I yeah, know. I think definitely the biggest thing is, um, is like the simulator work which you do prior to the event. I think it's on a, on a new circuit, generally if you start in FP1 on the back foot, it's really difficult to get up to speed uh, by like FP2 and then qualifying. Whereas if you're generally pretty quick in FP1, it's then quite easy to take that momentum into FP2 and then qualifying. At least for me in London, uh, FP1 was immediately quite good. And then um, you're not having to you know, make massive changes to the car to try and get back on the, on the pace of the front runners. You need to have a good qualifying lap. This year's a bit better because obviously you have maybe two attempts, whereas last year was you know, just a one, two, 50 lap. We put a lot of pressure on it, but yeah. Do you, uh, are you a fan of the new qualifying format? Yeah, I, I kind of also like, you know, the one, <clears throat> the one from, the, from the last year. And uh, I'm actually also enjoying, you know, the one from, 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 from this year. So I've got actually no real preference. Yeah. But I kind of like agree with you that when you come to a new track, I think confidence is key. Yeah. And you kind of, I think, understand quite quickly if you're going to be competitive yeah. or not. And yeah. I think that, uh, yeah, it's it's not only on this track, but also on other racetracks. Sometimes, for some reason, you know, you you try whatever, and, uh, and it's yeah. difficult, you know, to, to find you know the, the competitiveness. And some other times, for whatever reasons, yeah, it's actually it's coming more naturally. So you don't have to really force it so much. So this is the way I I feel it, you know, for for this kind of uh, for this kind of like new racetrack, new yeah. layout. Something what I've never really experienced in Formula E yet is this is actually the first hot race I, I would have done in Formula E. I think we've been we've been to some potentially hot races, but they've never been, you know, crazy heat. But um, I think this weekend with the temperatures, the thunderstorms potentially, yeah. um, it's going to be, you know, a thermally limited battery temperature race. And then obviously combine that with a race which could be red flagged due to that much rain. It's uh, a combination of two. So I think, yeah, trying to understand all this, put it together for the team, you know, it's uh, a challenging, Challenging part of the weekend for sure to try and anticipate, you know, the weather and um, you know the battery temperature. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think it's going to be very, very unpredictable. And um, for the people uh, actually being involved, you know, this weekend, I think it's going to be extremely difficult. Yeah. It's going to be difficult to predict a little bit of the issues that we are going to get. But I think for the fans, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool, and I think yeah. that this is uh, it's going to be great for them. So uh, I hope that they're going to have 
a lot of fun, you know, watching uh, us race. Normally, when you have like this kind of like condition, difficult conditions, you always get like yeah, the races are always a little bit more chaotic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So hopefully, it's gonna be great to see you. Yeah. It should be a good one. Well, best of luck, and hopefully, I beat you. <laughs> best of luck to you. Too. You know, I really love those chats between the drivers. I feel like you really get to see their personality. It's just like a fly on the wall situation. Yeah, it's really, it. they're really nice. I also like seeing drivers get about amongst the city as well ahead of a race like this, especially in a new location. Yeah, well, we did exactly that. Let's take a look at what the drivers got up to. Yeah, so here's obviously the opening for, for the first race here in Jakarta for Formula E. Very excited for us to be here. Um, obviously, we're meant to be here. Um, earlier, but uh, great to uh, yeah, visit a new city. I'm fairly optimistic on, on the track layout and how things are looking. It's not, um, it's not very tight, it looks pretty flowy and the tarmac looks quite clean and yeah, generally I think it will uh, provide uh, a, good, a good race and a lot of uh, excitement. Indonesia is, is a big, uh, big market for Formula E and uh, some new fans as well, so uh, looking forward to a very hot and humid race coming up on Saturday. It's happening here, it's uh, a welcoming for us in, in Jakarta, uh, kind of to kick off the event. We're doing a little demo and I guess we are greeting uh, the media and, and kind of, um, yeah, start off the Jakarta e -Pri. Obviously everyone has been looking forward to this one a while. There have been talks for a long time and obviously COVID was kind of making things a little bit more difficult. But it's very exciting to, yeah, to finally be here and also to travel back to Asia because we haven't been to Asia in a while, so um, I'm looking forward to it. It seems like everyone is very excited about it. There, there's a lot of awareness for, um, for us coming, so um, yeah, should be good. I've always been, been happy racing in, in Asian countries. Uh, you know, been, a lot of my success you know, <laughs> happened in, in Macau, uh, well, winning, winning that, that race, and uh, I don't know, I always get a cool vibe coming, coming to this side of the world. My first time here in Indonesia, um, we've been massively welcomed by, by everyone, all the people, all the, the high-end people as well in government and all that. So I think we're, we're in line for a great event. It's been really one of the highlights this year, getting all the fans back, um, back to normality. And, uh, you know, the track looks amazing. I think we're going to have a very cool track for, for racing, a lot of overtaking spots. Looks like the weather might, might play a big role as well. And uh, it's always cool coming, coming racing in, in these countries where they don't have a massive racing culture. So they really embrace us, they really embrace the, the series. And uh, it's, so it's super fun for us as, as athletes as well. The drivers are really enjoying the city, aren't they, Saunders? Yeah, it's a great place to go racing. And hopefully as well, we're going to be getting to new Indonesian fans, maybe even a few watching this. Oh yeah. Well, Sergio Sete Camera, as I said, had an amazing qualifying performance in Berlin. And I feel like he's got a lot to say about this weekend too. I mean, that was an amazing performance. To get into the duels, that is no easy feat in Formula E this season. So he did fantastically well. Yeah. Will he do it again? Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Well, something that we do know is that he's answered your fan questions. So we can hear about how he felt in Berlin, how he's feeling about Jakarta. Let's go straight to Sergio Sete Camera. What's your favourite part of a race weekend? Thanks for the question, Lucy. My favourite part of the race weekend is usually qualifying. It's where I think with our car we can do uh, good results and sometimes fight for the top 10, 10 positions and it's really the session that gets me most excited. How does the team feel after the Berlin qualifying? We were happy, but in Formula E you don't have a lot of time to celebrate things. It's just half, half an hour, one hour in between sessions. So yeah, it's very intense and we were just focused on the, on the race immediately after qualifying. But of course, we, we were pleased with the, with the result. It, it was due. At some point, I think we, we deserve to do it and it came in Berlin and hopefully will, will uh, happen again in other rounds, maybe here in Jakarta already. Is this new track suited to your driving style and do you think it will provide memorable moments? There's no onboard to look at, there's no footage, nothing. So it's all new, just got to head to it with open mind. But from the simulator, I do think uh, it suits my driving style and I also think it suits our car even better than other tracks such as Berlin, for example. If you could add one location to the calendar, where would it be and why? I kept saying Brazil, obviously that was already added to the calendar, so I guess that doesn't count anymore. Barcelona would be nice. I'm living near there since almost 10 years already and people always ask me, there's a race nearby, I always say no, we don't race nearby, so it would be cool to have a, a race close to where I live. Do you have a pre-race ritual? If yes, what is it? No, no pre-race rituals. I've 
I've been racing for about 15 years now. So of course, at some point in my life, I've had rituals, but I just try to get rid of them. I think it kind of is something which then you always got to do, and some days you're not able to do them, and then it kind of ruins your day. So I slowly got rid of this kind of stuff, and I think it only helped me. So uh, no rituals for the moment. What was the biggest challenge in transitioning from Formula 2 to Formula E? The biggest challenge was racecraft. Uh, Formula E cars, uh, as they are now in Gen 2, they sustain a lot of contact, actually, without actually breaking the car. So you can use that to race. You can actually use your car to lean against the other drivers, push them a bit, and everyone uh, was uh, using me like a punch bag on my first round in Berlin. I was getting shoved everywhere. So. That was the biggest difficulty. After a lot of years racing in single seaters, you kind of build that second nature that you cannot have contact. Any kind of contact is race over. And in Formula E, you just gotta remove that from your system because you can hit the wall and keep going. You can hit uh, a little bit your opponent or get hit by another opponent and still keep going. So that was a, a very difficult one to, to switch inside my head. But ultimately, I, I uh, got used to it. And I think it's a, something that all the drivers need to go through in Formula E. How does it feel having Gio as your teammate? It's been a very good experience. When, when he was announced or when I was knowing that he was coming, I immediately knew it was a, a good thing because he's a very experienced driver. I know his results and been watching him since uh, I was go-karting. I was watching him in the, in the single seaters and he was always doing very well. And then of course he reached F1. Uh, he brings in a ton of experience and is also a very nice person, a, a very good driver. So. Uh, it's good for me, good for the team, and also good for the championship. Well, Saunders, do you think he can do it again this weekend and get into the duels for the Jakarta e -Pri? It's tough to say. I mean, the odds are against him with the package that the team have this season. But having said that, it's a new circuit, new layout, new conditions. It sort of levels the playing field, so there is every chance that he could do equally as good as he did in Berlin or even better. Maybe he could even start on pole. Who knows? It's, it's loads of unknowns this race. And for the rest of the grid, what are your overall predictions for this weekend? Tricky one. I'm going to stick with my sort of original assessment in the VT earlier. I mean, Van Dorn is definitely the one to beat. He's got great momentum, as has Jev, as has a few other drivers. But similar with Sergio City Camera, new circuit, it could all change. And there are some very difficult, challenging conditions to contend with. Yeah, exactly. Well, speaking of conditions, the weather, of course, and with the weather forecast in Jakarta, it's like sunny like this, but then in the afternoon, it's forecasted to rain. So when you look at our sessions, you've got qualifying potentially in the dry, the race in the wet. What's this going to mean for the drivers? Oh, I mean, it's going to change everything. Because yeah. when it rains in Asia, it pours. Like, it's crazy rain. So what's going to be interesting is that we have seen Formula E contend with rain in races before. It's not pretty, it's very exciting. It takes ridiculous levels of skill to, to battle that. So if it does rain in the race, we're gonna see a whole change of order. Yeah. I think it could mean all momentum's out the window. You know, it really could mix things up. Well, you can find out exactly what's gonna happen this Saturday as the season continues with our same relentless attitude. There's no turning back. Jakarta, new city, new track. Formula E debut, all electric racing at 174 miles per hour at Tropical City. Top four now becomes top five as the race for the title heats up. Carter E3, no turning back.